uh, for this session, Ed, we're really talking about the beginning. We're the nature of Whitman's self. We're looking at sections 44 through 46, and 44 begins with those remarkable lines. It is time to explain myself. Let us stand up. What is known, I strip away. I launch all men and women forward with me into the unknown. And that unknown really is the province of not only Whitman's remarkable poem, but the whole nature of the universe, isn't it? It is, and, and the, it takes us back to the very beginning of Song of Myself. It takes us back to I celebrate myself and sing myself and what I assume you shall assume. The idea that the I will only be able to stand up and define itself if everyone else stands up with it. Uh, what I, I love about these sections, 44 through 46, is that this, this, is, this is the part of the poem that Whitman ups the ante about just how far he'll go into science, into evolution, into the fossil record in order to claim it as our origins of himself, origins of all of us. And so when he says, um, uh, we have thus far exhausted trillions of winters and summers, there are trillions ahead and trillions ahead of them. I mean, here it is again, uh, Whitman bringing in, trilling the trillions, you know, I mean, he is, he is bringing in that, that uh, gigantic mathematical word that is not the poetic word, but embracing it and saying, I'm large enough to contain the entire fossil record. The as vaster self. The vast, vast self, yeah. My feet strike an apex of the apices of the stairs. On every step, bunches of ages and larger bunches between the steps. And all below, duly traveled and still, I mount and mount. And then he says, rise after rise, bow the phantoms behind me. Afar down I see the huge first nothing, with a capital N. I know I was even there. I waited unseen and always. He puts himself at, at the Big Bang. He puts himself at the very origins of the universe. Every atom belonging to him was there. Every atom belonging to you was there. And he capitalizes nothing as well as unknown. So there's a kind of visual rhyme between the two. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. And this, this discussion about the nature of the Whitman self reminds me of the conversation we had this past summer, and we should take a, a listen to that now. Mm -hmm. Song of Myself. How does the poem begin? Why do we start with an I? How does that I celebrate itself and uh, the atoms that we share? Yeah, I mean, wh what an amazing opening line. We we've, we've talked earlier about how the uh, opening line echoes epical opening lines forever, right? You, you, you open your epic poem by announcing what it is you're going to sing. And Whitman opens his with, I celebrate myself, right? the democratic epic. Uh, we're not going to celebrate uh, a hero, we're not going to celebrate the gods, we're, not, we're going to celebrate the, 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 the common man. The, the common man, the democratic self. I'm really fascinated with the choice of the word celebrate. Um, it's such an interesting word because um, when we use that word, we almost always use it to uh, refer to an event. I celebrate an event. And, and built into the etymology of the word, the very history of the word celebrate, of course, is, is a sense of returning to, coming back to. Um, technically, we can only celebrate things that keep coming back. So we celebrate anniversaries. Birthdays. Celebrate birthdays. Uh, and, but the, the notion of, of we, we have it built into our language in all kinds of ways. When we say many happy returns, for instance, that's acknowledging that, that, that cycle at the heart of that word celebrate. Which is at the heart of verse in 
return. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we have with 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 Whitman the 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 strange notion that I celebrate myself. And one uh, a paraphrase of that might be: I keep coming back to, I keep returning to myself. Right? And and when we think of the way that the entire poem works, it starts with that in the 1855 edition, that giant uh, uh, typeface size of the I at the beginning of the poem, and then the celebrate in large letters. Um, that, that notion that, that what we have is an I that is moving out into the world to the point again and again that it almost diffuses out into the world, it almost disperses the universe. To the universe, yeah, to the cosmos, as Whitman would say. Yeah, there's just this, this, nothing is too large for the imagination to reach out and identify with. And just at the moment that it feels as if the self is about to come apart, then he pulls it all back in and he says, ah, I can contain this. This is making me larger. This is making me a vaster person by being able to loosen the imagination, loosen the bounds, loosen the, the taboos and the walls, and just go past all the boundaries and open and, up. And that's what gives us that sense, as you have said, of the, the line surging out and then the poem retreating. And yeah. Out and in like the sea, or yeah. like the tides, like yeah. the moon. Yeah, Whitman's mother once uh, has made the innocent comment that uh, when Walt was a little boy, he was always going out and coming in. And I've always loved that comment because that really is the Whitman's poetics. It's a going out and it's a coming back in. And when we celebrate the self, we, we have that sense of the I saying, I, I continually come back to this thing, this mysterious thing I call the self. But every time I come back to it, it's a different self than when I last left it because I've, I've, I've journeyed out into the world. I now have seen more than I had seen before. I've become those things. You know, in that little poem, there was a child went forth uh, in the 1855 Leaves of Grass. There's that, that sense of the, the, the child that goes out and the first thing he sees, he becomes that thing. Takes in all those objects. So where does the you then? fit into this? If, the, if we're returning to the I, to the self, how does the, uh, how does the you figure? Yeah, and th that's, that's uh, Borges uh, talked about this great mystery of the, of, of, of the Whitman character, the, 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 the genius of Whitman developing this I that was this every man Walt Whitman but also in some sense was the reader too, you know, that, that it's a very complex character, that that you works very much for us as we read the poem, but only because Whitman was able to imagine himself into the position of us reading the poem written by himself at a time when... Long after he was gone. After he was gone. After there were other avatars of, of living, after other bodies were now uh, manifest in the world and could, could read this poem. So there was this continual sense for, for, for Whitman of, of, uh, of imagining himself into other bodies, into bodies that didn't yet exist. And I think that's where the, the reader comes in. It's that, it's that great empathetic imagination that can say, after I'm gone, there will be other bodies with eyes, with brains, that will be sitting here breathing, holding this book, reading it. And this eye that I am developing can be embodied in the eye that will be reading the poem. Ages hence. And he not only celebrates himself, after the 1855 edition, he sings himself. What's the role of the, wh wh why the, Addition, what's the role of song then? Yeah, the role of song is really interesting, isn't it? Whit Whitman was, 
we, we mentioned earlier he was never never really sure when he began this what it was going to be. Yeah. It was going to be a novel, it was going to be a play, it was going to be anything. Like prose. Prose. He, had, he really had no idea in terms of genre. And one of the things that happened when he first published the 1855 Leaves and got the now famous letter from Ralph Waldo Emerson back greeting him at the beginning of a great career, Emerson said that he thought that Leaves of Grass was the greatest piece of wit and wisdom that America had produced. And in some way, Whitman was upset with the idea that Emerson didn't recognize it as a poem, right? Yeah. It was wit and wisdom, which in Emerson's hierarchy of, of aesthetic values was something below poetry. And so in the 1856 edition, Whitman, in his table of contents, lists every single poem as titles it poem of poem of poem of and then he writes the long letter to Emerson publishes it at the, at, the, at the back of the book and in the first couple of paragraphs there must be 20 references to the poems that I have written the poems that I've written as if he's saying to to Emerson no I am writing poems it, what you said hurt me <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make sure that we, 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 we rectify that and then, then he begins to uh, 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 retitle things, songs, and we have the Song of the Broad Axe, the Song of the Rolling Earth, you know, the Song of Myself. The songs keep emerging and emerging, and it's it's it it takes us back to you know the idea of poems. Uh, the, the the heart of poems etymologically is is building. Right, uh, and at the the heart of sing, it's one of those words that Whitman loved. They're, they're all through Song of Myself, hissing, lulling, belching. Yeah, they're 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 words that simply echo back to a meaning. That there's 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 no etymology to sing. It's simply this act of voicing, of putting into voice uh, something with music with rhythm and uh, so song the, the the idea that he's singing the self uh, is uh, I, I think really significant it's 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 that that self comes into being in some very real way only in the act of voicing the act of singing so that it, there may be plenty of wit and wisdom in Solomon but let's remember that it's the song of Solomon <laughs> right and Sing Myself is not the only addition he makes to that first section, is it? Right. The, he, he, he adds uh, the bulk of the what's now the first section. Uh, he, he pulls over from another poem and puts it into Song of Myself. And uh, that section, my tongue, every atom of my blood formed from this soil, this air. It's an amazing uh, statement because it's... It, it, it builds upon the every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. It's as if Whitman's saying, by the way, if you if you missed the implications of this, let let me let me suggest to you something about what the self is that's singing to you at this moment. Uh, you know, I ev every atom that is in me came from this soil and from this air, and the air that. Whitman is going to, in the first couple of sections, talk about being literally his inspiration. I mean, no poet I know has ever played as, as physiologically upon the notion of inspiration as Whitman has. You know, he's, it's, it's, it's to, to, to be inspired is literally to breathe in, and for Whitman, breathing in the air is his inspiration. It's, it's literally his inspiration, but also metaphorically and spiritually his inspiration. He's inspired by the very things of this soil and this air, and not only is he inspired by them, every atom that he's made up of is this soil and this air, and will again become part of this soil and this air. Mm -hmm. So that it has been there from the beginning. From the very beginning, yeah. Yeah, so then then he, he goes on and adds the section creeds and schools in abeyance retiring back a while, sufficed at what they are, but never forgotten. I harbor for good or bad, 
I permit to speak at every hazard, nature without check, with original energy. It's, uh, it's an amazing poem where, again, it's as if he takes uh, uh, what I assume, you shall assume, and says, let me, let me go on just a bit about this. Let's put every creed, every school, everything that divides us up and put it into a balance, put it to the side. What's, what's going to happen at that point? We're going to release an energy that is going to be without check. Nothing is going to stand and put barriers between you and me or this and that. Everything is going to be part of this soil and this air and this intermingling of atoms. And we're just going to see what happens when we break down discrimination, hierarchy, schools, creeds, all of those things go to the side and we experiment with an imagination that is literally open to everything. And of the origin, original energy. Original energy, yeah. It's always been there and always will be.